Hi everybody, this is Al Spath, your Poker Insider, and today we are broadcasting for the first time on Positive Poker Insider's channel. We're here with Two Isles, Carrie, she's sitting right up here, and I'll put the star on her in just a second. And we've got Sharon SL Powers in here. This is the second part of the promo presentation that they did. Uh, Sharon sat the other day and uh, Carrie shadowed. Today sh uh, Sharon's going to shadow along with me and Carrie's going to play. You can see she's sitting right here with 25.50. Um, before we start and everything, I'd, I'd like to welcome you both back to the table and ask how, how it's been going this last week, Sharon, since the last time we got together. And I've got a phone call coming in, but my uh, secretary hopefully will pick up on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know how that goes. I'm the secretary here. <laughs> what, I've, what's I've going on with the, uh, the your game? Tell us what you've been up to with your cash game since last week. Well, I've only played a couple of times. It's been kind of a busy week, but um, um, I've had a couple of successful caches. Um, I got very successful against Nagopolis um, when he likes to push with nothing. But uh, I went from 25 to 60 on my second session, my first session. I dropped down again and didn't uh, reload right away, which was my bad, and uh, I doubled up, but uh, from there I went to about $38, $40, I guess, for my initial 25 start. So those are the only two cash games I was in um, last week. So Well, that's awesome. That's yeah. good. That's good. Everything that's positive is positive. You know what I mean? Just It's hard to make up for negative. If you lose, if you lose a little bit, that's... You can overcome that when you lose continually and you're losing big hits. It's very tough to grind back to even get even and get above. So keeping your losses minimal and those uh, wins on the plus side, no matter how small they are or how big they are, that really helps you know build that bankroll up. And I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm proud of you and I'm glad to, to hear that. And uh, as we go through this session this morning, if there's anything that came up during the week that we weren't privy to that you want to ask a question about or that you have a concern about, just... Uh, bring it in when Carrie's not in the hand or something like that. Okay. And, and Carrie, uh, I know that you've been pretty busy. You had your sister, I think, that was ill or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So everything okay there? Yeah, but it, it's, uh, it's got other things going on now. I'm moving back to Vegas on Wednesday. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Gee whiz. Yeah, it's, it's just the uh, nature of whatever's going on. So I'm pretty stoked, but it's a little stressful. Do you have a place to stay out in Vegas where you used to stay before? Or? Yes, I did. Yeah, the same place. Okay, so, and and where is that close to the Strip or anything? Yeah, about a mile and a half. Oh, that's terrible. I really feel for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's right by UNLV, so I'll be back. I'll have my friends there. I'll be able to go back to the WPDG meetings. Oh, um, oh yeah, yeah. Now you can get me some Sunday conversation people, can't you? I probably could. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I, that's great. You know, I've, I've picked off a few of those people already, but I'm sure there's a few more in the audience that uh, I'd love to come on. I'd love to, you know, who I'd like to, you know, one of my guests, she gave me a card a couple of years ago, and um, I'd really like to talk to her. Nancy Todd Tyner. Oh, yeah. Nancy she's, Todd, yeah. She's she, called I, the poker, PokerQueenDiamonds.com. Right, yeah. I'll, I'll be able to bump into her once in a while. She does a lot of charity events, and she also yeah. does a lot of work for, uh, 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 but she's in and out of town, so yeah, I, I could get... Yeah, I'd like to talk to her. Out. I think she'd have something. I'd like to get more a few more uh, ladies' views and spin on, on what's going on in the poker, poker world. I, I want to balance it out pretty much. I know it's more dominated by men, but what do you have here? I have a Queen 10 clubs. Oh, of clubs? Yes. You had the straight flush? Yeah. Why did you bet? Uh, I, I didn't think about it, really. <laughs> yeah, when you, when you flopped the nuts, and I mean, that was a big hand. You got to let that person catch up and let them, if they have the ace of clubs, for instance, and another club comes off and they think they got the nuts, you've got the ultimate nuts. You got to let them, especially Todd. Todd's a big uh, calling station. Okay, 
That's that's a big. You never want to bet when you have a made hand. Well, I had I had the straight, and I and I had four clubs, so I didn't. I meant, I'm sorry, I didn't flop the straight. I had I had I flopped the straight, but one of them was a spade. But I had set eight, nine, ten, jack, queen. Of yeah, clubs. but you said you had you had said you had queen tennis clubs. Yeah, yeah. but one of them was a spade. Okay, the ten so was a spade. No. Okay, okay, oh, okay, okay. I okay. got you now. I got you. Okay. Sorry, that makes my a, mistake. That likes that makes a lot more sense than what. Than having the, the uh, straight flush. All right, Again. so I've got ace queen here. I'm going to raise. Sharon, I see that you're also in the chat. Can you let me know if you got an email saying that I broadcasted this? I song? did. That's what took me there. It did. Very good. So that everything's working. Got to make yeah. sure everybody has their notifications on then, and, and that's great. Yeah. I hired somebody this morning to do a, a different like overlay for me, so it looks a lot prettier than it does this morning. I, I'm sure it's not great, but uh, we have to do something, right? Yeah, I find in those situations where you've kind of flopped the nets, I hate to totally check it because I think it's a big tell, but then if even a small race, it just seems to... It's like they can see your cards for kind of odd sometimes. Yeah. No, oh, I know what you mean. I know yeah. exactly what you mean. Well, slow and steady. Now, I also, what, what I've noticed about you in the past when we played some of the... Uh, I was call them home games, where we've all gone into Heartbeat Poker and we've all played on their table and stuff like that, is that when you get a little bit of a stack, you seem to get a little bit wider on your hands and get a little bit more aggressive and take a little bit more chances and then all of a sudden you get clipped. I want you to keep maintaining the discipline that you've been been doing and when you have a big hand like this I assume that you have ace queen or better here or a big pair? I have a big pair. I have queens. Okay. That, you know, you get Nagopolis' money. See, that's too low with that board as wet as it is. That's allowing somebody to draw, and now they may have hit an overcard, but you don't know that. But I thought that first bet of half the pot was very low. He's sticking around, and I don't think he's got the diamonds. I think he's more. He's good more. But see, you shouldn't bet here for value because you don't know how strong he is, and he does have the ace. You'd have just lost more money on the end. He told you that, but if that flop comes and you make a pot size bet with your queens. He's not staying with ace king, and you win uh, that hand. You think so? I, some of these guys, they just not with not with a wet board and oh, and just over cards against somebody that raised pre flop and then puts a big bet in of of. The, remember, she put two seventy. She would have put five forty. You're not calling yeah. five forty with just two over cards. That's true. So you know that that's that's where the whole mistake was on that that hand. It changed from winning ten dollars to losing ten dollars. Okay. Which is a twenty dollars switch, and and you really can't afford those kind of swings. So just remember, if you're up against uh, uh, one person like that, you know, you got a board that looks like that, or you know, you're you're, you're tentative about what what what's out there. You got to bet bigger, and you got to force. Think about it. If they called you, and they have over cards, let's say he had jacks or tens. You want him to call a bigger bet with that hand. You don't want him to go away. You want him to think he's got an overpair to the board and he's going to give you his money. And if he's got an ace king or ace queen, you want to get him kind of out of there because you're vulnerable. Ace queen doesn't bother you, but ace is, you know, ace king does. Queen's not going to bother you because of it, but the ace is. What do you have here? Uh, Jack eight. So he checked, you bet, he called. Uh, so I'll take the free card. Yeah, you can't. You can't. You got You had the barrel. He may have a three, in fact, but now he's got a queen and a king there. You've got a barrel, and if he stays, then you know you beat. And if he comes over the top, you know you beat. But you can't check. Check says, I give up. All right? Yeah. All right. What do you have? Seven four. Okay. 
So you had Rez's favorite hand, huh? I know. I was really wanting to play it. I've been playing that a couple times. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> hey, yeah. Well, thanks for Posse uh, 1972, SL Powers, the Lango, Wacky One, uh, which is Sky Mats uh, Matsuhaka. I'm, I'm going to butcher his name continually. Matsuhasha uh, from out in California for, for telling me that you got the emails and you came in to see this inaugural uh, again, I'm doing. Uh, having, I hired somebody this morning to do a new overlay for me. Um, I tried to get somebody that you're all familiar with to do it, but apparently uh, that wasn't available. So I got somebody else. I can't wait. Please you tell your friends to follow me here. Some of them might not know that I'll be twitching here exclusively at Positive Poker Insiders. I may. I may every now and then do something off of Al Speth just so I can advertise this channel so that they'll, because I've got about 110 followers over there and I want to make sure that they get a notice that I'm over here full, full time now. King of Spades. Okay, so this is a little wider than, than, than normal. You want them out. You don't want, well, no, you don't want them out. You don't want them in. Well, I just took advantage because I was before the button, so. I know, but your bet is again. You're you're going to that half. It doesn't do anything for you. Okay. You know, if you're gonna fire, fire one big bullet and find out. You know, if you you now you know this guy, he's in the hand and he's gonna take it for sure. <laughs> I found in my last session that uh, I was a lot more aggressive, which really helped me on that particular table. Mm -hmm. um, the only familiar guy was Nogopolis. The other ones I've seen on your uh, your site, that hashtag, and uh, there's a couple of other guys right. that I've seen play before. But uh, they were giving me a lot of respect, which really helped. also helped. I was getting some cards that I could play with, too. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> when you get the cards, you got to play them aggressively, and you got to yeah. be able to continue Asian bet, and you got to be able to barrel on the on the, on the the uh, turn. You're really hoping that if you get two or more callers that are your, when your barrel or continuation bet on the flop, you get rid of one or both of them and win it, especially if you don't, if you have a weaker hand and you didn't hit, like a miss with ace-king or ace-queen or something like that or maybe you have pocket nines but then jack flops you still bet hoping that nobody has the jack and that that your nines will hold up you just got to be able to pull that trigger on the turn too but don't do the half bet it's got to depending on how much is in the pot and how much um the three quarter or a full pot bet is i i think you should stick more with that if you want to keep somebody in do the half pot what do you got here Isles? Ace six, the ace with the diamonds. Okay. Now here's here's the thing on this. Did you really want to win that one seventy one, or did you really want the diamond to come off and really stack somebody? Well, I would have liked to stack them, but even if I just bet like that, they they had nothing. So. But you don't I, know that when you bet, right? Yeah. Well. So what I'm saying is when you have a potential draw that's the nuts, maybe you want to make a bet that keeps people in. You're, you are sacrificing maybe the pot because you might not take it down right there, but you're really looking to win a bigger pot. So sometimes you have to put a little gamble into your game and say, you know, I'm going to bet on the come. I got two cards to come. I got about a 36% chance of getting there. And if I get there, the implied odds of me taking on somebody's entire stack is pretty big. But with three diamonds already on the board, if they don't have one, any bet's probably going to push them off, right? Right. Oh, I see the Langos hosting me over on his channel. Thank you, and thank you to all his viewers over there. I appreciate that very much. This is Al Spath over here at the new Positive Poker Insiders Twitch channel. All I'm saying, Isles, is, is just, just consider... If let's say you had the queen or the king of diamonds 
you'd want to take it down right away because you don't want the ace to stick around and beat you. But if you okay. have the ace, you might want to stick around, charge them to stay in, but don't scare them out. Okay, all but right. Just consider that. Yeah, there's so, always the possibility that they do have the king, and uh, a mid-size bet might keep them in to try and chase for that, even with the three on the board. According to what you said, Al, um, I'm not going to open this, although I, I normally would if I'm the first in Jack 4, but you said it, I've been doing too wide, so I guess yeah, that's Yeah, that's, that's automatic throwaway. Yeah, well, you, it's a Jack They were suited, but that's It doesn't, doesn't matter. It doesn't, it's only 3% better. I mean, yes, you could do it, but I'm saying that percentage-wise, it doesn't pay for you to spend your money on that. So he raised, but see, your raise is not enough. You re-raised, and you, you're even if you've got aces here, that raise should have been at least a you know, dollar and a quarter or more. Well, I've only got nine, so I, you know, I'm so assuming you to, somebody's. You have to make it big. Uh. <clears throat> Ten doesn't help you here, does it? No. No. Somebody sitting there with the ace, likely. Yeah, you you priced. What you're doing is you're pricing people in with the wrong hands. The hands that you have are not good enough to price. You, you know, you have nothing here. Ten doesn't help you. Nothing. Um, because if somebody has an ace, they get a bigger straight. When you have a hand like that and somebody makes a min raise like Todd did, make it three times his bet at least. Uh, he bet 50, make it a dollar fifty or something, and that way Tune Tender gets out, and then you've got position on Todd, and a flop comes like that, he's got to put you on a big hand. He's scared he's going to fold the most raises that you follow up with. So you got to think out the whole scenario on what you're trying to do there. So you're just saying my bet sizing is wrong. Your bet sizing has been wrong the whole time, yes, yes. With your half pot bets and your not betting on the turns and then your 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 uh, three bet or four bet, let's say one, two, one, two, th three bet that time, it should have been much higher than 101. Because he bet 50 cents, you bet you bet 50, 51 cents more. There's no way he's going to fold that hand. He's already told you he had something by doing a min, min raise. So you've got to go much, much higher. All right. <clears throat> what do you have here? Jack six offsuit. Okay. So all you can hope for is that um, they all die. <laughs> all right. <laughs> but Todd hasn't. Todd hasn't found a fold button in ten years. So, do you recommend carry reload? I like to reload when I get down under, uh, when I'm playing like a 10 cent 25, if I get down under $20, I like to, to reload back up uh, too. But if you want to keep track of, and let you write it down, since carries at 17, she might want to just put five in right now, then she knows she's in for 30. It's a lot easier to keep track if you do it yeah. by increments. <laughs> But she, she filled it up completely to 25 so she, you know, she put in almost $8. So we know she's in for 33 and so we definitely want to try to get that uh, bankroll up and so she needs to really hit the, you know, the, the 40 mark before the, the time is up. So we'll just take it slow. We just She was building it before. She was up to 33 She took a, a big hit. Posse 1972 said with pocket nines, he would have bet four or five times his bet. I agree 100%. You know, at least three, if not four. Um, I would have I would have tried to take it down pre-flop with the nines. And if the flop came, I wanted them to know I, I got really something good so I can follow up with the bet. Now, Nagopoulos is saying he's got six here. He doesn't. He lied. And he says he would have seen bet with that flop. The flop was Jack, Queen, King. And I would have too. If I, if I would have bet big like I was saying for Carrie to do there, then yes, I would have absolutely seen bet against, especially against one opponent because they would have been, unless they hit it, they're going to be very afraid that I hit my hand. They're not really going to worry about you with the small bet that you made. 
Ace two off. Yeah, not very good hand. No. It only takes, but you got to be patient. It only takes one double up to get all your money back and then some. So you just got to wait for the right hand, the pair of threes that hits the set, the seven eight is suited that hits the, the straight draw, and you get there, or the flush. It's it's going to come, and if it doesn't come, it's because the cards dictate that. You have no control over them. You do the be best you can with what you got. Yeah, that's one of my problems. I can go for so long without getting any cards, and then you start trying to make something happen, and it just never works. I'm going to try out my camera right now for those that are watching, just in uh, in the chat to see if it comes through. On it, it's got about a two minute delay, so if you see it, let me know, and we'll go from there. On the new overlay that I hired somebody to do, you know, there'll be a spot for the chat, or if, I don't know how to get the chat to work. Actually, <laughs> you know, it works on when I did it over at the, at the other heartbeat. Uh, but I, I haven't been able to do it on my Twitch channel. I guess you have to add a scene or one of those type of things, and I'm not too slick on that. I'll stick to doing what I do best, and that's work with clients and teach poker. Any cards? No, Queen takes off. See now a hand like that, if nobody came in and I was up against these two people here and you're on the button, not the cutoff, then I might try you know, 50 to 70 percent of the time raising it up to 75 cents and trying to steal. You're going to steal from the blinds 80 percent of the time you're going to be successful, 70 to 80 percent. So why not do it when you're on the button? It's tougher when you're one or two spots away from it, but even with no cards, you can get it away from you can get away with it on the button a lot more often. By the way, the Lango. If if, if you haven't uh, signed up for the Lango, you can go over to his. That's L A. The Lango. I think I did. Yeah, Hitman's. Yep. Yeah, L A N G O. That's Hitman. That's Dave Romer. He's from Poker School Online, lead instructor over there. So you can go over there. He's hosting right now, but you can go over there and and click on his name or follow him. And, um, he'd appreciate the follow, just as I appreciate the follows everybody here at uh, for Positive Poker Insiders. Thank you very much. The video is on. The video is on now. You see it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What a great looking guy. <laughs> I know him personally. Do you? <laughs> you have to get us an introduction. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, he's, he does personal appearances. Ah. <laughs> it's like a silver They don't go stick. very well, but he does them. <laughs> <laughs> so here's Walt. He hasn't been too active this morning, and he's betting. I see him out. He bet a good amount there, and Todd is the calling station. Todd didn't even hesitate to call there. So, you know, you got to worry about Todd in the fact that when the board pairs at the end, Todd is one of those guys that he'll stay with bottom pair, middle pair, or with a, a gut shot draw. So if a board pairs or if a card comes that completes a straight, even though it's a weird looking straight, you got to watch out for Todd because he's that type of player. So I don't want the board ever to pair unless it's going to give me a boat when I'm up against Todd. So Walt's a pretty solid player. Um, at at times, um, I don't. I think he's more nitty than than, than anything else. I think he waits, uh, but I've bluffed him off a lot of hands. He he respects the fact he doesn't like to see three bets and stuff like that uh, so Isles I'm going to say you made this huge here I'm going to say you're more like pocket sevens what do you got I've got kings I made it huge because you said every other time I'm not no that's okay that's okay now what are you going to do here now this well, time I, I thought I'd bet like 350 okay good. Here? 
That's all right. This this time you want callers. See, you got three kings, right? Yeah, I bet a little less. Usually, I normally just do half pot. So now I've just done, you know. Now I'm gonna want him. So. So I'll bet seven seventy. But now this, this is the turn. This is where you want to get a guy really hooked up. He's got an ace king or ace queen. Hurry maybe. up. King jack. King Don't queen. check. Okay. There you go. You, you no, go. I was using the slider. That's all right. Just use the pot button. Well, now I'm using pot. You hope he has queen king. You hope he has ace queen or ace king, and he didn't have it. But that that's the hand we were looking for. The big hand yeah. to get you back nice. to plus and everything else. That's that's really good. Well, now I. I'm not set sure straight yet on like the, these bets. So okay. like, okay. I've got queens, so I'm gonna pop, pop it up. What's to, the, like? Look, look at what the pot is it's, right it's now. It's a dollar twenty-five, so I'm gonna put it up to like three dollars, three fifty, three twenty-eight, whatever. Hit the pot from. button and see what it is. Hurry up. I know it was a dollar thirty-eight. The pot was. No. When I got there. No. It was 50 50. Your 25 was in the pot. It was, it was, it was, the pot button was at least a dollar fifty. You got queens, right? Yeah. So there you go. Wow. <laughs> That's the worst card in the deck for you. Yeah. What a board. Are you shitting me? You got a call. You got a call. You got them. Go. You got all of it. Yep, there you go. Nice. Nice. Beautiful. And all of a sudden, two hands later, she is riding. Now I'm just going to call this for 15 cents. I have ace three. Okay. It's so much easier when you get the cards. <laughs> I think I should just check here. That's right. That's right. And we'll get back to the betting in just a second. Uh, all right, that's right. That looks like you're betting. That, that, right, that's a good over bet there. Because now it looks like you're betting the jack, not the ace. If you had the ace, you might have bet something different. Before, when you bet, like, with the kings and you bet two something, you can do that at the table when you have these aggressive players and hope they'll come along with you, thinking that you're out of your playing zone and stuff like that. But most of the time, you're going to hit the pot button or you're going to hit three times whoever comes in the pot first. So whatever you're thinking about coming in there, don't get just, confused that you have to make. It just seems every, every time, any time to bet I make, they all come in. Well, you know? if you're at a table that they're doing that, then make the bet bigger. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. All right. I, I could bet min, min bet or min plus or... Three no, times and they all use, come the in. use the three quarter and the pot button, okay? If you're gonna raise pre-flop, if you just hit the pot button, you'll see that it's almost right where you need to be. All right. Okay. It'll adjust for everybody else that came in the pot. And if you then, let's say you hit the pot button and it comes out to two dollars, but you think it should be two fifty or three dollars, just change it. It'll give you a good guideline that you know they say, well, that ain't enough. I want to go a little more. Just change it. All right. And the worst thing, if you can't get a change, you can always hit the pop button and, and get the money in, and you, you're going to achieve what you wanted to achieve. But you're doing fine. You're doing fine. Remember, this is with that big loss on that one, that uh, $20 turnaround on the one thing where you let the guy come in with the ace king and you didn't bet enough on the, on the flop and he got the ace on the turn that he took away from you. So, um, you know, that one hand... Is the difference between you having eighty dollars and sixty-one dollars right now? So those right. are all the things we're trying to eliminate. Is the ones that take away from your stack. I'm trying to get it ingrained right now. I'm just a little frustrated because I'm I'm just. No, no. This is this, this is all, this is what this whole thing is about. Is to try to get it get it straight. So just keep asking the questions, and Sharon and I will keep pointing things out. So the people in the, in the chat, uh, in fact, Posse just said, "I'll." I think the king hand he was chasing it straight, and then Posse said, "Wow, back to back, very nice queen queen hand." So you got a rooting section there, and we're all <laughs> rooting for you. 
to keep it up. Hey, hey guys, I can't see the chat. <laughs> That's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you what it says and everything. Yeah. I, I think if I had to boil down to, to what your main objective and uh, problems are, is that you need to, the bet sizing, we're going to get that under control, and that we want to stop you from playing those hands like that uh, Jack Four suited, and those hands that get you into trouble that really you don't need to do when you're not first in on the button, okay? Right, I think I'm used to like usually 10 tabling, I mean a 10 man table. Right. Usually, I mean, usually if, like the first four or five people, you know, just like they fold, fold, fold. If I'm going to be the first in, I'm going to be the aggressor. And usually, I mean, I'm not going to do it with a really crap hand like 7 4, but if I got a face card and, you know, Queen 9 or something, or that's when I'll do that but so six-handed I can't I can only I guess I can only do that from the button apparently right um, this is Isles what do you what what you're saying this group doesn't respect your play they are saying that you raise or call too many hands so they're playing sub marginal hands against you he's absolutely right based on whatever notes they have from their holder manager in the past on you or what they've seen today they're they're thinking what, that what was the note tell me again what were they saying they're saying the group doesn't respect your play because they're saying that you raise or call too many hands, and so they're playing sub-marginal hands against you. See, now that's the wrong rate. Why would you do the 101? Where do you get that from? I don't get that at all. Uh, why, why didn't you hit the pot button? Okay, I'm hitting the pot button. No, no. I mean, pre -fop. I know, pre I know. I get what you said. Why is this guy? Why? <laughs> He's gonna make a big bet what have here. What you got, Gary? Oh, just see what you got. If you have anything. Ah. Uh, What'd you have? I have sixes. Oh, we didn't know that. Hey, now I have queen ten of hearts. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna again, open this up. Carrie, Carrie, listen, listen. You're not. You're acting on your own, and I don't want you to do that. Hit the pot button right now and see what it says. Don't bet. Just see what it says. It should say 60 cents. It says cents. 60. It says okay, 60. What's, what's wrong with that bet right there? It's not enough. Okay, then make it more. Well, now that's too much. Well, I, I, the slider didn't work. Okay. But I don't want to see the 101 anymore. That's Somebody makes it 50 cents and you go 101. That's I don't know where that's coming from. That's just nuts. What do you have? I have a queen ten of hearts. Okay. Well, bet it like you have queen ten of hearts. <laughs> so you got top pair, and you got a Flush draw. third nut draw, and you took it down. There you go. Okay, so what did those guys say again? Please read it to me again. Okay, just what do you have here? I have two nine. Okay. Um, don't so don't wait wait. Before you fold from now on, I want I you. Wait. I want okay. you to hit the pot button. Don't bet. I want to see what it says. Like right then, like there was a guy that made it fifty cents. I wanted you to see what it would say. It doesn't say one oh one, okay? Right, but You're, before I just read the pot on the thing. I didn't. I didn't tap the pot button, but I was reading how much was in the pot. But you're not. You're not including your normal bet. That's what you have to do. You see, right. your bet right. counts, too, as part of the pot. All right, I got you. Okay. Okay, so hit the pot button, and that'll adjust it for you. All right? So what okay, they're you're saying... You're telling me to read the pot button. Okay, I got... Now I know what you're saying. Right. I just look what's in the pot, but I should have to ask, add mine. Got you. No, what I want, want you to do is, whenever you get ready to raise, hit the pot button, see what it says. That's going to include your bet. And then right. if you think that that's still not enough, add something to it. Okay. Most of the time it's going to be correct. All right? All right. So what they're saying, are you playing this hand? Well, I think I'll call. I, have, I probably have odds to play. I'm 8, 10 off. 75 cents into 370, 330, 335. No, I'm not going to. Okay, good idea. Even though you were closing the betting there, they had 
one person that raised and three people, two people that called a raise, they all have better hands than you. So you had to get really lucky on that flop. So it's not worth it for your time. If they'd have all, if they'd have all come in, I would have come in. Maybe but not. Yeah, one more, one more in, you'd have got six to one on your money. That would have been right. probably better. When you're out of position, you're really looking for seven or six to one, six, seven, eight to one odds because you're really in a bad situation with speculative cards. Are you playing here? I, I don't know. I have to see. I pocket twos. So if they raise too much more, well, now I've got to, uh, I don't know if I should just call or, I think I should just call. That's correct. You're set mining against a guy with $30. He's got, he's got at least 10 times what you're, and you're just hoping for catch a two. If you don't catch a two, you don't catch a two. Now see, this is the kind of guy that if you didn't hit the jack, I would steal from him. If I looked at his bet right here and it was a bad bet, then I would three bet him or I'd hit the pot bet and I'd steal it from him. Um, or I'd bet into him. See, he checked. Now he's probably there. He probably hit the ace, but he missed the jack. He's very predictable usually. Okay. He should uh, bet. He should bet. Yeah, he's going to bet here. He probably had ace king or ace queen. Yeah, he, he finally hit his card. But see, on the flop, he's... He's uh, he's very weak. Are you playing? I have Jack Queen off. Okay, depends then, right? I'm gonna de depend on what these two do. Like these. Now I'm gonna raise. That's right. We'll, hit, we'll try the pot button and see what it says. Ninety-five cents. That's right. That's twenty-five, twenty-five, ten, and your twenty-five makes ninety-five cents. That's how you figure it out. That's a decent enough bet there. I got the queen of spades. Okay. It's a so, very, very wet board. I think half pot. Nobody's staying there unless they have something. So you got to find out. You absolutely can't check there. That's right. Jack Is half pot enough there, Al? Um, I like to manage the pot there I think that was so coordinated Sharon that if I put the half pot I still find out what I need to do true you see okay. and then I can get away from the hand cheaper I, I, I think it's too much to invest a full pot or a three-quarter bet on that one because especially against these two clowns uh, Nagopolis right. and, and Todd okay so um what do you have I'm gonna I have pocket seven so I'm gonna raise it up I guess I'll raise it pot there or should I go. raise it? that's right <laughs> And if you thought that the pot was too light, instead of 135, you could have made it, you know, 175. You know, if because of you know the, the quality of your hand and everything else. Now that was a quick call from Nagopolis. That tells you right there that he's got a pair or he's got big over cards. Okay, so you really needed to hit the seven there, which you did, yeah. and you got too many opponents. So that's right. You got to just. Give it up. Hopefully that eight would have been a seven, and then you'd have been back in business. But it wasn't. Well, now I'm going to try to take it away. Now you can't. <laughs> Why? Okay, go ahead. Do what you want. Because they're trapping you. All right. Now I can't bet. Go ahead, Diopolis. Wow. <laughs> Ah, uh, you won that. I don't know how you won. He must have had King Ten and had an open set. But you got to be careful that when when you got two over cards on the board and you got three opponents, somebody's got a little something. So, yeah, I know. I figured that. But if I at that point, I knew I had to take a stab at it. Well, it worked for you. It, it did. You know, I wouldn't have, but it worked for you. So you know, plus for you, that's great. I mean, just well, gotta, I mean, they're, they're normally all, then you would you would have just checked. Yeah, I would have. I was shutting it down as soon as that flop came, and I had three opponents. And I only had sevens. For sevens, if I was going to three bet somebody, I wouldn't have made it the, the pot. I would have seen the pot was 135, and I would have jumped it up to 175. I think Dave, uh, Dave Roma Lango saying the same thing in chat too. What, uh, what did he say? He's saying that if they're opening to 50 cents, my three bet sizing would be 150 to 175, depending on the depth of their money. So that's exactly what I was saying. Okay. I'm folding. King four off. Okay. That's right. You don't have to get involved in hands that are crap. Even if two kings fell off, you know, came flying out or a king four, and you say, oh, God, that's that's results-oriented. That's You can't play 
the game that way. Right. You're doing fine. Remember, you don't have to play every hand. You have to you have to win the hand you play. It's not how many that you play, it's how many you win that you play. So that's the most important thing about Right. I I can do that. I just want I just want to get this bet sizing thing down cuz it's really pissing me off. <laughs> All right. So. All right, let's let's make let's reduce this down to its essence. You're gonna hit the pot button, and if it looks like it's a little light, you're gonna make it a little bit bigger. Okay? If it looks All like right. it's adequate, then fine. Especially if if somebody else has come in the pot for his min raise or anything, it needs to be a little bit bigger. Okay? Okay. So just keep that in mind. It also needs to be bigger when you got sixes, I think too. You don't want callers when you got sixes. All right, so I think you got ace ten or ace nine. What do you have here? I've got a king eight. King eight missed completely, huh? Ace ten, ace nine. But he checked. Been. He checked. So what do you do? I thought I, I should bet pot. Maybe. There you go. You got to find out right now. That's it. And you're up against one opponent. Put the most pre and they checked. Put the most pressure against them. Now, if you would have been over to bet, over bet the pot there, and I was playing you, I would know that you're missed, and I would come after you. But when you bet the pot, or even three quarters, I know that you've you've hit something, or I I got to give you the respect that you hit something. Okay. Okay. Posse thinks that uh, Nagopolis stayed with you with a small pair. I think he stayed with King, something like uh, uh, a straight draw, like ten nine. Or I can't remember what the cards were out there, but you know it could have been exactly what he said. Two five would have been a wiener. Yeah, you don't know if somebody has a straight. You don't know if somebody has a. He only bet a flush, quarter. But you don't know because you can't see the cards. It just showed weakness to me, is all. I'm folding three five off. Good. Now watch what the other guy does here. He just calls and see what Walt does when somebody limps into him. Okay. That's information. If you're not watching when you're not in the hand, you're missing information. You gotta see what how people act because Walt might be on your left sometime. So maybe when you have a decent hand you wanna limp into Walt, knowing that he'll make it a dollar and you can come over the top of him or flat him and then take his money on a later street. So you learn things about tendencies of people when you're not in hands, not just when you're in the hand. Have you seen Walt bet since the pre-flop? <clears throat> nope. He's sitting there with probably another ace, ace queen. Now he's in position here. He knows he can take a free card, but if he's got something like king queen, ace nine, he's going to win the yeah, thing. If the other guy would have bet, he would have won the pot. But that guy should have never called with queen eight for a dollar. You know? No way. It's pretty easy to figure out, actually. You can make money down here at 10 cent 25. If you study these players and play smart and do the right bank and wait and be patient, you can build a bank. Rob Gag is a good example of that. He has really made a lot of money at these tables, and now he's learning the six-player table where soon he's going to be ready for a, 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 double, a double session. In other words, two tables at once. I know he's already saying, no, well, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, Posse's right. When Nagopolis checks, I always bet into him. Almost all the times when he when he checks, he's he's dead in the water. What do you I, got? Uh, queen six off. Okay. So you're second in. The first guy checked. What do you do? I'm going to bet. Bet okay. something. Okay. Well, what's the most likely thing you should bet? Maybe pot. There you go. I want you to keep thinking that. I was thinking three quarters, but then I Just thought about not, it. It's not enough. Now it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, why they be in there. Well, wouldn't you stay in there if you had a five? <laughs> well, they play just about any two. That's right. Well, I know. So that this is what I don't get. See, like... Why they don't play like crap hands like this? They they just 
not usually. You don't see people playing just crap yeah. hands. Here yeah. it's just like it's so frustrating because they play any two. Well, yeah, they, you're going. To, that's that's why you have to learn everything here so you can escape the mic rows and get up a little higher to 2550. Then they play a lot better that you can judge what they're playing. Then 50 cent one, it's a, it's a different game. But you have to get all the mistakes out of the way down here where it won't kill you, okay? See, when I play with the whole table of like PSOers and guys I know, they don't play, they play like regular and then I can play my usual game. But like it's a different, it's a totally different thing here, that's you gotta, for sure. You gotta play the player, you gotta play what, what yeah. sits down at the table. Yeah. You gotta adjust your game for every situation. Uh oh, that's a badass card right there. There's the full house, the straight flush, the flush. Oh my goodness, so many, just so many things. The guys are good players, but you know, in the end, to a degree, we're all predictable because we know each other so well. We can change it up a bit, but we we kind of know what we're gonna, what each other's gonna do. That's right. Makes the game more fun, I think. But you know, rather than trying to make your way through a minefield every hand. See that again. Todd likes to do this men raise. Your bet there, Isles, depending, let's say you had sixes, your your bet would have probably been around $2 there. If you hit the pot button, the pot button would have, would, would have said $1.35. Your 50, his 50, the 25, and the 10. That's how you, you figure it out. So okay. $1.35 would have been nothing that he would have sneezed about. He would have came on. So if he's not going to sneeze about paying 75 or 80 cents to call you why not make it two dollars against him and make him pay a dollar fifty and he's out of position and he's he's calling you he's not re-raising you so charge him a premium to see and then when you go to your continuation bet it's going to be a bigger amount of money you might get shake him or you might get more money in the pot to help you okay that's how you got to look at it if people want to pay the money, then you need to make them pay full fare. You know, if they want to pay first class tickets, you know, go ahead. If they don't want to go tourist, that's a different story. People got money. I mean, I've seen this guy reload three times. I've seen Nicopolis load twice here this morning. Just, just watching, you know, you play him. The jelly donut doesn't know what he's doing on the side. He's, he's, <laughs> Taking a Go break. and get a jelly donut. Taking a taking a break. He's having coffee with his jelly donut, I guess. Again, thanks to Lango, the Lango, T H E L A N G O. Please follow him on uh, Twitch TV. He's also hosting this broadcast this morning. Just grateful. Thank you. We'll Dude, I was going to play, but I'm not now. What was it? If he says he's going to call, I would have called. 6-8 off. Okay, good. Good decision. That's what we needed. Now, now there's ace-king or better. This is usually a pair, but it's ace-king or better. He stopped doing the ace-queen recently. Now, that's just the way he does <coughs> things. So you don't want to just jump in there with him when he does that. Just let him have his fun and 10 cents or whatever he's going to win. All right, I'm going to call for 15. Two, three, off. He did that to me twice the other day, once he had ace Yeah, he's going to take that away from you every time you limp aisles like that. You, you know, he, you, you, either, now you can't compound it by calling him when he goes to dollar fifty. That's throwing money away. All right, all right. You, you know, just because he's an idiot doesn't mean that you have to come down to his, his style of play. Just all right. forget about it. My mistake. Got either it. raise him pre-flop. But then if, he, if you limp and he raises, just throw it away. Don't commit error on error. See? There he goes again, tied with a min raise. It's stupid. Those dollar fifties here and there and everything, they automatically they add up at the end of the session to about nine, ten dollars, and all of a sudden you're wondering why you didn't, you, you know, take away money. You got to save all that money on, on those silly. You want to prove a point, but you also don't want to spend money to do it. Okay, yeah, that one was silly. Got you. You said if you want to bet a dollar fifty, bet a dollar fifty into him and take it down, rather than, than call a dollar fifty. You can't win if you call. It, it's you know you have to really hit something. That with two three especially. 
But if you raise, then you got to beat. If he folds. King, queen. So I think I need, it says 60 for pot, but I'm going to raise a little more. Okay. King, queen, diamonds. Suited. Yes, diamonds. Okay. Now remember, now Walt's here, he's tight. If he comes over the top of you for four times your amount, he's got a huge hand. That's what you got to figure out. When people out of position do certain things, That's right. Well, I thought that was the pot, but that's all over the pot. I, I was going to do just pot, and then I was going to put it 20 cents under pot, but it, the slider came off wrong. Did you use the slider at all? If you put your cursor in where the amount shows, it'll go blank, then you can type it in. It's a lot easier. All right, he's got a hand. That's right. <coughs> he's got pocket deuces. <coughs> He's chasing the hearts. Pocket deuces. Yeah, deuces. Tin tender, I mean. Yep. Pocket deuces. Yep. I put tin tender on two hearts. Figured he was chasing. Yep. Jack eight. Off. Okay, you got middle pair. And you're okay. first. Yeah, so I'll bet pot. Pressure on the opponent. Now he can only stay if he's got something. Now you're cooking. I'll bet pot. It looks good. You also could check there as if that didn't help you and let him put money in the pot and then come over the top of him. All right? Yeah. Think yeah. of it that way. you giving him a free card there is not going to hurt you if he takes it. You might even get a full house. I've done that, but I'm uh, with two uh, suited cards on the board. I'm always worried they're chasing a. Yeah, they could be, but think about it. They yeah. they don't have that many cards to come. They don't have the percentage. You're way ahead of them, that, so you yeah. give them the opportunity to fail. Yeah. When they have a thin drawing uh, margin. It's a monster you, under the bed. Yeah. Syndrome. No, I and it happens. Now you fold it on the button there. What'd you fold? Four eight off. Good enough. I like that. <clears throat> Even I wouldn't play that. <laughs> <laughs> Good girl. Uh, queen seven off. I'm folding. Mm -hmm. Hey, Red Marion's in the that. house today too. Good. Hello, Marion. Marion Bush. Now we have I got two people sitting out. So this is going to be... Four-handed. They're playing a wider range of hands more aggressively. All right? That's what it tells you. When you play like this, you got to play more aggressively. Your bets have got to be more solid. A7 diamonds. Pretty good hand. Four-handed. Yeah. It's not the nuts. No, not, it's no, not the nuts. Yeah, no, it's not. The wall takes time. A lot of times he's working on the slider. Say so he was trying to get a bigger bet there. Well, okay, I'll just call. Mm -hmm. See, that would have been a much better flop with an ace. I uh, mean, with a with a three nine seven, where you have a pair and then you have an over card to get your two pair. You know what I mean? It right, been, but it's always better when you're over card. So that's a great card for you. Oh, I gotta go with pot then. The only person that stays here is the person that has the king. Ah, uh, shoot. Yeah. He didn't bet the king though. Uh, I mean, he, he called you. <laughs> yeah, he just called. He called. I still think he hasn't hit his hand. No, nah, he's got oh, the king. He, he hit the king. He hit the king. He does, he, Walt doesn't stay unless he hits yeah. something. You needed a diamond on the end to win that or maybe an ace. Five, six suited. Love it. 
These are the hands I think make the most money at these games. Oh, he's got a hand yeah. now, so I'm pulling. Yeah, he's telling you for the first time. He's been 50. Here comes Nagopoulos with his pocket queens are better. Here we go. Jacks. And he hits it. Oh, my goodness. He hits a boat. On the flop. Todd, you can't risk all your money on a flip with Ace King against him. You know you're up against a pair most of the time. It's ridiculous. Todd's reloaded for the fifth time. Man, that guy goes through some money. All right, I'm going to say you got Ace Jack here. What do you have? Sixes. Sixes. Okay, I see how quick that call was from Toon. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. All right, I'm just going to check it. All right, that's the white flag, so they're thinking they're ahead. They're thinking they're ahead? They know they're ahead. They, they, they're waiting on you. Oh, man. Yeah, wow. got, that, that was a nice win for you. On Boy, these guys are really playing some wide-ass crap. Excuse my French. Wow. That was a tough board to continuation bet. I, I saw your hesitation. I, I, I understand. That was tough. When they checked it back to you, they made a big mistake. They bet you fold. That's that's their pot. You know that? Right. They made right. the big mistake. They didn't They didn't bet it back at you. But then I knew they missed. I mean, if I put I put it a dollar eighty five. Well, this uh, I raised. It. Oh, I'm folding here. Okay. You got so they Rob, all came along. You got Rob Gag to your left right now. He is not on the call, but he is in the chat room. So he knows how you've been playing. <laughs> he Hi, knows Rob. how you've been playing. So it's your job to take extract from him and. Maybe change your game just a little bit here, but maybe not. So he don't know which way you're going because he's listening to me say what I'm telling you to do. I'll tell you. Uh, I'll so whisper. It. I'll, I'll just whisper in your ear. That is great. I got four ass hats and Rob. So nice. So what do you have? this is what I'm gonna do. What? I have jacks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they never fold. See, all, they never fold. It's okay. Here, so here now you got a big enough pot. You don't. No, you can't go half. So you're not gonna get anybody out with half. But now it's too late, so it doesn't matter. Can't go half. Why? Uh, what should I've gone? Just three quarters. That's gonna determine. That's gonna make. Then you only have to make one bet. They stay. You're done. If they if they come over the top of you, you're done. If they go away, great. But one. Three quarter bet there was enough. The pot was big enough at five dollars that three quarters was plenty to do. You didn't have to do a full pot to find out that you lost. All right, okay, yeah, I get that. I get that. Ah, he's got a hand. I had ten seven off. Mm -hmm. That's a weak bet. What the heck? Yep. Tune tender is going to bet the putt. Nine. He got there. I could tell he got there. <laughs> Stupid tide. 50 cent bet. 25 cent bet. There. He's gone now. Five reloads. He's finally gone. Maybe. Uh, maybe that's I, the... I, I think I should play this, but I don't think I should play it for raise. Jack nines. Offsuit. Okay, I mean, you can mix that in, sure. Um, but if somebody raises like that, you know what to Jesus. do. Um, now, Todd, that guy that was just there, I don't know what his full name is. You can go back up in the scroll to see it. But I would add him to your buddy list. That's the guy you want at your table. He's going to spend a lot of money. So he's the guy I'd be looking for when I sat down at the table. I got a few of those on my buddy list. I'll share them with anybody anytime they want to know what they are. Chef Bob is one of them I look for. Um, Cyber or something or other, I, I look for him. 
the Kripney. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'd get him to smile if I said that. Uh oh, here comes Leo. He knows I'm streaming. He, but uh, I don't know if he he's a part of uh, Positive Poker Insiders or not. <laughs> I had ace three suited there, but it was I'm too up close. It's okay. If six handed ace three suited, you come in for a raise of the pot. That, that way you manage the pot. And then you can throw it away. Walt comes up for three dollars. Walt's out of position here. And he's saying I got big pair, ace king. Rob called him with a snap call then. So I think Rob has got a pair probably a tens or something like that. Let's see what Rob says in the chat here in a second. Yeah, you'd have bet 60 there, Isles, and then Rob would have raised you or called you, and then Walt would have went three, and you'd have thrown yours away. Once right. once he did that, you were done. That's it. Rob okay. had 9-9. Nine, nine. <laughs> I said 10. <laughs> Rob doesn't like it when I call out his hands. What do you got? Queens. Okay. I'm going to bet pot. Okay. So you're saying you're better than him, and you're not worried about his nine, right? No, I'm not. Okay. Now I'm kind of going to be a little wary. He's going to bust a move on you right here. I think so. What is he doing? Well, he's got a piece of that flow. <clears throat> that looks like a good bet there. That you're saying you want to get paid off for it and everything. That was a good bet. That was a good bet. It wasn't too small. It wasn't too big. It was. It looked like I want to get paid. And if he had a pair like sixes or seven like that, or something. He might have paid you off or might not, so that was good. That was one of the scariest hands I played queens. Yeah. Jeez, well, you had a pair so on the easy. board and you had a three flush on the board. That was very yeah. tough, yeah. But think about it this way. When the 9-9-2 nine, nine, comes off, if you don't think your opponent has the, the nine and you have the queens, you're not afraid of anything there. Go ahead and check and let them put money into the pot, and then you can either check raise them or flat them and then look for the next card. So think about it. A, an alternate way of just betting into them, okay? Just checking it when that. Just checking it when the nines come out. He's probably going to bet. He probably doesn't have the nine. The person with the nine wouldn't bet anyhow. And then you can check raise them, or you can flat them, and then see what the turn card. You know what I mean? You have options. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're not going to stop right now, but I just want for the video purposes and everything just to, to, re, to recap here i was added eight dollars early on she sat with 25 she's up 35 for the session so the session itself has come to a, an end i was you you're willing if you want you can stay at the table you can end the session and get off the table i'm going to stay here for a little bit and still broadcast but it's up to you as to what you want to do yeah i'll continue i mean i don't feel off tilt either way you know good tilt or bad tilt so okay so your decision to stay is strictly based upon you're feeling good you feel like you're under control you feel like you got the table measured uh if if it starts to slip away from you you're going to bank what you won but you're not going to give it back is that what i'm hearing right that's what i'm gonna, i'm basing it purely on how i feel right at the moment i mean i am Things are going pretty well. I made a couple mistakes, but I, I feel even emotionally, so I'm just going to go with it. Hey, Maximus. Uh, I appreciate uh, Follow Maximus. Uh, just click on Poker uh, Positive Poker Insiders there. If you haven't followed, just do it. I don't know what your name is. I'll give you a shout out in your city if you want to. Anybody else that's watching this over on the Lango, and uh, those of you that are watching this up on YouTube, 
the lango is Dave Romer. He's the lead instructor at Poker School Online. You should be following him. And uh, his followers are welcome to follow me here. And, of course, I, I encourage my followers to follow him there because Dave knows what he's doing. Hey, he was one of the guys I hired over at Poker School Online, and I've never regretted uh, working with him. Great guy. He, here, uh, here. Yeah. That, you can hear him over on Heartbeat Poker uh, Twitch channel as well. Don't mind giving a shout out to them as well. They've been very nice to me. They've helped me. So thank you. Ah, uh, did you see Ari Ariango won the Aussie Millions the other day? Who did? Ariango. That's a, that's a guy I studied with when I was out in Vegas the first time. Oh, really? Yeah, he's him and David Chikovsky, mostly Ari. So we did a couple one week sessions, and sometimes he'll have one once in a great while follow up. But there's a group of people who they, we kind of got a bond, kind of what like we have at PSO, you know. So yeah, he won the Aussie Millions. David Chikovsky, his nickname is uh, the Maven. The Maven, yeah, he's. Uh, he, he's a little bit above uh, I mean he plays high limits and stuff like that but he's his uh, his talk and his conversations are pretty in depth he's a pretty intense uh, math guy isn't he? very I'm telling you when I come you come out of a se three four day session yeah. five day session with them you, you feel like you just come out of taking the SATs your brain <laughs> your brain is fried For those that are watching the, the camera and stuff like that on the OBS, I took the camera off. Um. I have Jack Ten off. Uh, I don't. I can't continue on that. Yeah, but if you bet, you can win. If you don't bet, you can't win. See, he's gonna bet. He can win whether he has the spades or nothing. What he did to you was he just took advantage of. I mean, he may have something, but when you have a situation where you're heads up with somebody, use the board. To influence okay, them. Okay, yeah. See, got you. That's the better bluff from you than than just doing it because you got position and some lousy cards. Uh, this hand, I feel like playing. I've got nine seven suited, but I don't know what to. Uh, I think I'm just gonna. It's probably one I shouldn't call. I'm gonna call it. But it's one of the spots that I. You no, know, that's, that's, that's a leak. My... That's a leak. It's a nice hand, but. You're up against a guy that hasn't been raising that much. You're out of position, and your cards aren't that great. And you don't know what Rob was going to do anyhow, so it was just throwing you up. You got diamonds? Yeah, I got diamonds. Okay. Just remember. Okay. Too much, maybe. But he comes over the top of you. He's got queen king. But right. that, you didn't get paid off. You want to get paid off at the end. You don't want to do a full pot. You want to go $2 or something and just get paid for your money. Okay. There's value in a smaller bet there. Yep, I missed the value on it. Yep, got you. Okay, guys, I'm going to end uh, the call. i got to get my car taken care of. Okay, and uh, I'm going to stop the stream. And for those that are watching the stream... Um, I, I really do appreciate that. Um, this is uh, Al Spath, the Poker Insider, over on Positive Poker Insiders. Uh, we launched today. I'll have a new overlay pretty soon. I've hired somebody to do that for me. I apologize for the graphics on today, but I'm very proud of what Isles has done. And Sharon, thank you for contributing. I hope you both got a lot out of the double session. I might be offering the same thing again in February. Stay tuned. And for those out there that didn't take advantage of it, we still have Eric from out in California, and Nick to do from Baltimore, which we'll be doing probably this week. So I'll talk to you all soon, and thank you so much for watching the stream and following me here as Isles raises once more and causes me not to stop the stream until I see what she does. <laughs> Thanks, Al. Good luck, Carrie. All right, bye. Thank what, you. Thank bye you for bye. your input. What do you got there, Kerry? I've got a Queen 10. Okay. Uh, yeah. See, now that's against one person. You really want to go the full pot. Again, you want to influence him out and not give him a chance to try to steal back from you. So let's see what he does. Hopefully, yeah, see? I knew he'd do that. Yeah. All right. That's all right. Okay. Just let him have it. He knows that the next time when you have a really good hand and you want him to do that, you know what to bet, okay? Yeah, the same kind of smallish bet, and then he'll 
try to come over the top. All know. right. My advice for you right now is take your win and bankroll it, okay? All right. All right. Take care, everybody. We'll see you all Thanks later. So Thank much, you, Carrie. You did great. Thank you, Al. Okay, bye. Bye now.